Hello guys, this is Grumpy. Welcome back to another Feed the Beast tutorial. Today we're going to be covering uh, red alley wire, insulated wire, bundled cable, and finally timers. So this tutorial is going to be more for beginners. If you're new to Feed the Beast or to Red Power, uh, this video is going to be helpful to you. Otherwise, maybe not, probably not, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, red alley wire is basically it's a replacement for redstone dust. It works a lot better. So what's the advantages? Well, first of all, uh, redstone dust only can travel 15 or 16 blocks. Anything further than that, you got to put a repeater in line, and the repeater just resets the signal or whatever. So uh, if you want to go further than 15 blocks, you have to use a repeater. Well, with red alley wire, it has a range of 255 blocks, and that's probably all you'll ever need. That's a very long distance, so um, that's like a quarter mile or something ridiculous like that. But anyway, uh, red alley wire travels 255 blocks. Uh, another advantage of red alley wire, it can travel vertically up surfaces just like that, and it can also travel across ceilings. So as you can see, I have it right here. There we go. Well, I'm using this red alley wire to light up this lamp. This lamp's part of red power also. Um, here's, here it is right here. It's just called a red lamp. So this top end, if you want to make a lamp, this top end lamp. They're pretty cool in, in themselves. Um, basically, if you give them a signal, they turn on. That's just a basic red lamp. But they also got inverted versions, so it'd be called like an inverted red lamp. And what happens is, is it's always on unless you give it a signal. If you get a signal, it turns off. So it's backwards. So what that's good for is just let you uh, put down lamps to, that are if you want a lamp to always be on you can throw those down and never have to worry about putting like a redstone torch next to it or anything like that but anyway that's part of the that's the red alley wire so um what else can we go about red alley wire first of all you can't put it uh, side by side so if you do this number right here it connects to itself so that's not good what if we wanted to run two of these in parallel well we can do that with uh, cover strips. I have a tutorial on microblocks. Check that out if you want to know how to make these. But there we go. That's how you keep two wires from touching. Um, so that's very useful. Next, we're going to cover the insulated wire. Well, what's the difference between insulated wire? Well, first of all, this red alley wire it energizes every block it touches. So this block right here, and this block, this block, all these blocks are energized. So we can actually verify this. Let's go ahead and put a lamp up here. So this lamp is just sitting right on the block directly above this wire. So let's see what happens. As you can see, the other red light came on too. So red alley wire is energizing all these blocks. Well, we may not want that to happen. Like what if it's running beneath? We just want the wire to, to grow across machines like let's say there's a macerator up there or whatever or we, but we don't want the signal to, to uh, affect the machine upstairs here's what we do um, we use insulated wire uh, this stuff right here does not energize anything except that the only thing that's actually uh, is affected are the ends so if I flip this switch right here you can see the light comes on light goes off but none of these blocks in between uh, see the redstone signal. Well, it works just like real world wire. Uh, if you touch a real wire, if it's insulated, nothing happens. If it's bare, you're gonna you're gonna pick up the signal or get shocked or whatever. So, um, I got another cool demonstration to show that to you here. So I have a second switch over here. Let's flip the switch on. For some reason it turned on that other light. Oh, that's right, it connected to that. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Now, this this right here, there's a blue wire. Oops, let me climb back up here. There, you, there's you can see the switch, red all, bare red alley wire. And by the way, red alley wire can connect to insulated wire, so you can see it connecting right there. Comes up over here, goes across here, and finally it lights up this lamp. But you notice it does not light up the red lamp. The reason is because it's insulated. So if I was to have used red alley wire all the way from here to here, this lamp would have lit up too. So that's one really cool thing about insulated wire. So when your your machine stuff gets start getting complicated, you can like control your uh, which blocks get energized and whatnot. 
Here's another cool thing about the insulated wire. It comes in 16 different colors and the colors do not connect to one another. So as you can see right here, we got a blue one and a green one side by side and they do not connect. So you don't have to use cover strips. Um, very handy. Here's another cool thing to note too. Even when I connect the ends, or touch the ends together, they won't connect. So let's do this. There's a green wire. And there's a blue wire. They will not connect under any circumstances. If I did happen to want to connect those, the way I would have to do it is I could just use some red alloy wire. And then at that point, they are connected. Because they can both connect to red alloy wire. So let's throw down the switch we can verify there you go so finally let's cover this bundled cable this or it's right here um, the bundle cable works just like bundle cable in the real world what a bundle cable is is when you take a whole bunch of wires and a zip tie them together and so you got like a big cable with you know five or ten or twenty or wires in there or whatever so that's the same thing we're doing here this is bundled cable right here um, so I have three wires going into it and they come out over here. So I've got red, green, and blue going in and down here I got red, green, and blue coming out. But at this point all three wires are tied together. So let's hit these buttons and watch the lamps down there. So as you can see it's working just like it should but at this point we only have well we only have one cable. So what is this useful for? Um, basically to save space so let's say you had a factory you had a main floor and beneath that you had a basement so you got your machines and all your automation upstairs and downstairs you may have some control logic you know logic gates and on off switches that kind of thing but you don't want 10 or 15 wires uh, running from the basement up to the floor so you'd run all your wiring into bundle cable and then you only have one single bundle cable running up to the ceiling and so here's what you can do with this bundle cable too um, you see how I broke them out all at one point? You don't have to do that. You can do it like this. So at this point, you can have the green break out here. Let's go ahead and stick a lamp there and see what happens. Uh, anywhere you, you want this green, anywhere you. St oh, no, I don't want to put it there. We can make it break out anywhere we want. So once it's in that bundle cable, we're free to use it whenever we want. So let's hit this green button and see what happens now. You can see now three lights or three lamps light up. So basically, like uh, your basement, you put all your your on-off switches, whatever control logic, whatever you want to put down there. Have one bundle cable running up. The bundle cable can run by all the machines, and whenever you want, like say this is a macerator, reds to turn on the macerator, um, just break out the red cable, and you can break it out in more than one place. Like I just demonstrated with the green, the I, I broke out the green here here and here so it's very very helpful now finally I'm going to cover the timer um, may seem odd to put it in this particular video because but, but the reason I'm doing it is because it's a basic uh, building block of uh, red power 2 you use it you'll use it for all your automation and stuff but it works a lot better than the minecraft one first of all we can set the time that's how long it takes it to spin around so I have it set to, for one second and so every one second it puts out a pulse. Now, if you look when the pointer gets to right here, it puts out a pulse. First of all, let me place this again. I want you to note that the pointer faces away from me. So that's the output right there. I'm standing on the input. Um, so let's go ahead and show you how to turn this thing off and on. We get a lever right here. I got two demonstrations here. First of all, if you give the thing a signal right here on the in, on the input, it turns it off. Now here's one thing to note right here. This thing, these, uh, this right here is output only. This one here is input only. The sides are inputs or outputs. And so um, if I was to flip the switch, it turns the timer off. And so let's actually put a lamp down here. And I want to show you that it can act, the sides connect as either an input or an output. So as, as you can see right there, the lamp gets, is getting a pulse because this is acting as an output. But let's flip the switch. There we go. Over here, it's configurable, however you want to do it. But 
Let's get rid of that switch. There we go. Okay, so we could do it like that, however you want. But one thing you remember is the side when you place it, the side away from you is the output, and this side over here is the input. And that's what you're going to use most of the time, honestly. But the reason I was covering timer, like I say, I'm going to be using it uh, in the very next tutorial, actually. Um, it's used for automation. So next video, we're going to go over the pneumatic tubes, uh, filters, uh, mag tubes, redstone tubes, restriction tubes, all that kind of stuff. So you're going to learn basic automation in the next video. But as you can see right here, um, I'm using a couple timers in this simple setup right here. So that's why I went ahead and covered it in this video. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It helps my channel, but also too, it lets me know to make more videos of this type. And very soon, we're going to start getting into more practical applications. Like um, if you check out my Tekken tutorial series, um, you'll already see a ton of practical applications, automated doors, automated sunroofs, um, alarm systems, all kinds of cool stuff. But anyways, Grumpy, we'll see you next time, and I appreciate you watching.